Okay, so here uh, we're putting together an example to talk about how you can do linear interpolation in Excel. I made another example before this one, and we're going to do the exact same example for starters here on how to do it by hand and how to and linear interpolation works. Now we're going to talk about how to do it in Excel, and it's nice to be able to do it in Excel. Why? Because Excel can automate calculations, so if I need to do linear interpolation over and over again, boom, I can, once I've got it set up in Excel, I can do it much faster now, and there's a lot less chance of me making a mistake, so that's why we would want to do it. So the example that we're working at here is we have a table of X and Y values, and then what I want is to be able to put in a value in this cell for X and have it interpolate the value here the corresponding value for y. And so with linear interpolation, the idea is to look up a value here uh, in x and then fill in that value for y. So with 1.4, that's between 1 and 2 in this table, so the y value needs to be between 2.1 and 3.2. So we want to be able to do that calculation, and the number is 2.54 that we came up with last time. So in order to be able to do this in Excel, we're going to have to use three functions that you may or may not have seen before. I'm going to talk just briefly about how those functions work. The functions are, one is VLOOKUP, the second one is called INDEX, and then the third one is called MATCH. Okay, so yeah, so if x equals 1.4, I need to be able to go in here and find these four cells within the spreadsheet, and so I want those to be populated here. And you know, one way that I could do this in Excel is just to make a reference to this equals to that cell, this equals to that cell, but but that's no good because if I change this, then those won't automatically update. So I, I want a way that I can use this cell as an input and get these four to be filled in with the values here in the table that I want. And so then if I changed it to say five or 4.5 or something, then it would go in here and grab the right values. So I can do this with these three functions that I just mentioned. So the first one we're gonna use is called VLOOKUP. So I'm going to use VLOOKUP. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use VLOOKUP to find the X and Y values on the lower end of the uh, table that I'm going to use. So X lower and Y lower are going to be filled in with VLOOKUP, and then I'm going to use INDEX and MATCH to fill in the other two. Okay, so how does VLOOKUP work? So we're going to do equals VLOOKUP. It's a function, so I need parentheses. It basically, VLOOKUP is going to go into some kind of array, which is just another word for a table. It's going to look in that table, and it's going to find the value in the first column that matches what you give it, and then it's going to return the value in one of the other columns. So here we're trying to look up the 1.4, so I'm going to make a reference to that cell, and then I'm going to hit a comma to provide the next value, and so the next input is going to be this whole array of values. And I want those to be stationary, so I'm going to hit the F4 button, which allows me to make this whole thing stationary so that if I copy the formula to another cell, it will continue to look at these 10 values in this array. Uh, the dollar sign in front of the A means to hold the column constant. The dollar sign in front of the 8 means to hold the row constant. So this will do both. If you hit F4 again, it will allow you to toggle through. Here now we see that just the 8 through 12 are constant, so if I copy this to the right, it would move the references to the right, which I don't want. Here the 8 and B are constant, so that can go up and down, which I also don't want. And then, But I do want it to be stationary. This is none, so I'm going to make that stationary. Okay. The next thing it asks for is the column number to return. So it's going to look this value up in the table, and then it's going to return to me a value in this column that I specify here. So if I put column one, it will specify something from the first column. If I put column two, it'll be the second one. If I put three, then it's gonna give me an error because there's only two columns. So here I want the first column. And then the last one is, it's asking me whether I want an exact match or an approximate match. So if I put false, it'll require an exact match. Let's try that. And so it says not available because 1.4 isn't in the table. So if I make this a 3, it will find an exact match here in the third row of a 3, and that will work. But what we want to do is to get the biggest value that is smaller than the value we input. So if I change this to a true, now it'll stay the same because it's working, but if I pick a value now that is in between, this will return to me the lowest value that is uh, 
the largest value that is less than or equal to what I put in this cell. So that's going to be the 1 here. If I change it to a 4.2, what is that going to be? It's going to be the 4. Okay. Now if you look up here, remember we put the column equal to 1. If I change this to a 2, it should return the corresponding value in the second column. Okay, so at 4.2, it's returning the 4 here. The, the value in the second column is an 8. So if I change this to a 2, now it returns the 8. If I change this back to a 1.4, what is it going to give me? Think about that. It should be 2.1. Okay, and it is. All right, so I can use this exact same formula here to grab both the x and y lower values. So I'm just going to copy the whole thing and dump it in there. And now I'm going to make this first one the first column and the second one the second column. So now I have something that I put in an x value here, and it's going to give me the lower bounds for x and y in these two cells. Well, now I need to find the cell right below that. So there's a function called match that I can use to look up the reference number within an array of the value in another cell. So I think it's actually a little bit easier to understand if I do this with the y value, so I'm going to do it that way. Okay, so y is 2.1 is the first value in this array. If this y was equal to a 5, it would be the third value. So I can figure out what number it is by using this match function. So if I put equals match of this value, and then in this array, and I'm going to make it stationary like I did before, it will return to me a 1 showing that it's the first value in the column. Now if I change x here to 4.2 again, what is that going to do? Now it's going to grab the 4 and the 8 here for these two cells, and now the lower value here, 8, is the 1, 2, 3, 4th value in the column, so that's why this turns into a 4. Now what I want to do is grab the value right below it, so I have here at 4.2 it gives me an 8, uh, and that's the fourth one, but what I want it to do is give me one after that one. So there's another function called index that allows you to just specify which value in a cell. I'll just do it up here. Index within an array. If I want the, if I grab that array and I give it, say, a 2, it's going to refer to the second value in that array, which is the 3.2 here. Okay, so that's how you can grab it. So I can use index with match here to find this value and to find the one right below it. All right, so how am I going to do that one? I'm going to change this function here. I'm going to make it index, and now it's asking me for the array, which is going to be this same value, which I'm going to hold stationary by hitting F4, comma. And now it says which number, and so if I put match, it will just return to me the same number that I already have. But what I want it to do is to go one past that, so I just make a plus one. And so now you can see that I have bracketed the y values between 8 and 10. And I can use this exact same function here to grab the x values if I move it around. Okay, so I want it to use the x values here, so I'm going to move both of those references over. And so now you see that I've got for 4.2, I have the 4 and the 5, and then the 8 and the 10. If I change it to 1.4, if we've done it correctly, it should return these four values. And it looks good. All right. Now we've gotten our four values for the interpolation, so now we just need to use our formula like we did before. So remember the fo formula is our starting point plus slope times the, d the change in x. So what is our starting point here? It's going to be y lower, which is the 2.1. That's where we're starting, and then we're going to multiply the slope here times the change in x. So what is the slope? Slope is, remember, change in y over change in x, so y upper minus y lower divided by x upper minus x lower. That's the slope. And then I'm going to multiply it by my change in x here, so that's going to be my x value that I want to interpolate at minus the starting point, which is the x lower. Enter. And so now, boom, there we go. We've got x equals 2.54. So we've written an interpolation function here, and now I can very quickly interpolate at some other value. So if I go to 4.2, I get 8.4 for y, which is between here and here, 3.6, so on. I can do all those at once. I can do 1.4, 3.6, 4.2. And now, if I've got this all set up right with the cell references, 
I should be able to just copy this down. So I have something that I can use uh, over and over again, very handy. So this is how you can set up an interpolation function in Excel.